Good morning. I will never be the man that this did not happen to. I will be forever changed. Do you remember who said those words? Well, everyone directly involved in this matter, the Chicago Police Department, the city of Chicago, and especially my clients, Ola and Abel Oshundairo. Now they can say that same statement. My city, my police department, and my clients all deserve to have their reputations restored. Attorneys Mark Garagos and Tina Glandian, through their continued false statements and hateful rhetoric, have only deepened the damage that was caused by the very first out of 16 counts of lies that were told to the police that started this whole situation. That is why today we are taking action in federal court we want to end these malicious attacks and ensure that those responsible for continuing to destroy the reputation of the Chicago Police Department, the city of Chicago, and that of Ola and Bolo Ushundairo are held accountable. Let me make one thing perfectly clear. The Chicagoan brothers told the truth they could have remained silent. But instead, they told the truth to the police, and with their right hand in the air, they told the truth to the grand jury. We're going to make sure that the lies and malice attacking our city, our police department, and my two clients are met with truth and healing. At this time, I'd like to introduce two attorneys from their respective law firms, Kulis and Associates and the Law Office of James Tunick. I've proudly partnered with them in getting this lawsuit off the ground. Attorney Greg Kulis has nearly 40 years of civil federal litigation and enjoys an excellent reputation, not just in Chicago, but with his cases ac across the country. Attorney James Tunick handles some of the most complicated and complex federal cases that you can ever imagine and has a significant background in defending constitutional liberties. I am very proud to partner with them. I would like to give them each an opportunity to say a few words to you. And afterwards, I will read a statement that the brothers have prepared. We will take a few questions after that. Mr. Cooley. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Gregory Coolis, and I'm one of the counsel that has filed this lawsuit. As Gloria has said, Ola and Boa are Chicagoans. They were born, raised, and educated near Wrigley Field in Chicago. They are Chicagoans. What has happened to them is a continuation of, the, of an attack on all of us who live in this city. As lawyers, we have certain powers, but we cannot abuse that platform. We are given or the platform that we are given to defame others for one's own fame and fortune. That is morally wrong, that is ethically wrong, and we believe that is legally wrong. That is why we filed this lawsuit. We filed this lawsuit in the United States District Court right here on the corner. There are consequences for the actions that Tina Glandian and Mark Garagos have taken. Today's suit enables us to make sure that those consequences are decided in a court of law, not on a cable news network, not in an interview on a TV station, and not in some squib that is made in a newspaper. That's where we should be, in a court of law. We filed the United States District Court because there we believe we will get a fair venue. People question what happened in Cook County. People question what happened in the court system. The answers will be given, the answers will be unveiled in federal court, where we believe that as an independent venue, we will have the facts come out as they should. 
Just the other day, um, somebody called for an independent investigation uh, of what occurred in the Cook County courts. Promptly, the Garagos Law Firm allegedly filed something to prevent that. They don't want the truth to come out, yet they continue and have no qualms about bashing and defaming our clients with untruths. I believe this lawsuit will be the first step in showing not only the, the citizens of Chicago, but the nation and internationally that Chicago is not what they portrayed it to be. Um, and we hope that this lawsuit will be the first step in curing the wrongs that were committed upon our two clients. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is James Tunick, and I'm also one of the attorneys representing the Chicago Brothers. No one should be surprised by this lawsuit. Not the law enforcement community, not the legal community, not the Chicagoland community, and not anyone from our country. Nor should the defendants be surprised by this lawsuit because they know the extent of their false and vicious remarks. Nevertheless, we will act with dignity and respect during the course of this federal lawsuit, which is currently in the United States District Court as we speak. No man nor any woman is above the law. The, the complaint is a serious, serious complaint. Make no question about that. The, it's all laid out in the lawsuit. There are numerous defamatory statements, and they're all alleged in the 16-page lawsuit that we, follow, we, we filed. Again, we will act with dignity, although Mr. Garagos and Ms. Glandian did not act with dignity during the course of the criminal proceedings. We hope they follow our lead and act dignified during this lawsuit. I will tell you this, the scorched earth lawyering will not play out in the United States District Court in Chicago. I know, I've been practicing there for 25 years. Greg has been practicing in the federal court in Chicago for 35 years. We intend to get justice. Thank you. <clears throat> no. At, at this time, no problem. At this time, I'd like to read to you a, a, a statement that Ola and Bola prepared themselves. They also have a longer statement I believe they will be releasing after the press conference. We have sat back and watched lie after lie being fabricated about us in the media. Only so one big lie can continue to have life. These lies are destroying our character and our reputation in our personal and professional lives. Those who know us personally know that we don't have hate for anyone who is not, that is not who we are. We try to spread as much love and positivity with whoever we come into contact with. We will no longer sit back and allow these lies to continue. And with that, we'll go ahead and take uh, a few questions. How, is, it a, is it a tough bar to clear? You know, you're talking about their reputations. They've admitted taking part in a fake attack. How do you get, how have their reputations been? How have they been defamed? How have they been 
When you read the lawsuit, you'll see how they're, they've been defamed. But as far as their participation in this publicity stunt, they've realized that, that it was wrong. They've apologized for it. And they've expressed more than once that they are tremendously regretful for the role that they played in it. But make no mistake, they had no role in calling the police. And they had no role in defrauding the police department. Mentions lost business opportunities and that kind of thing. Can you point to any specific instances where they've lost business due to some of these statements from Garagos and Blandian? At this point, I think that would be too uh, speculative for us to, to admit uh, as we have just filed this lawsuit. Um, but those details will be shown in the course of litigation. Greg, if you wanted to add anything to that. No, I think the, the complaint basically indicates that there's some lost business opportunities. They have a, a, a training and health program that they've tried to market. Um, that has been now basically destroyed. So, um, I mean, this is relatively new, but they, they can't get jobs right now. They're having uh, issues trying to make ends meet. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the first part. Have, have they had any contact with Jesse Smollett? Has he called them? Has there been a conversation? Has he said they're sorry? Have anyone said they're sorry to each other? What's going on there? As, as far as we know, there's been no contact, no attempts to be uh, reached out to from either side. The suit says that your clients feel unsafe and alienated in Chicago. Can you elaborate on that? Absolutely. They can't go down to the corner store without paparazzi chasing after them. There are still reporters that are uh, knocking on their door, wanting their story. Their phone calls, uh, the phone calls they're getting, they're inundated with still requests for interviews. Um, social media is blowing them up with positive things, negative things, and also questions about why haven't they come out yet. And that's all, to them, very alienating. Didn't their participation in this, regardless of what Mr. Garagos has said about them, So I, I really think you need to take a look at the lawsuit because it really lays out the specific allegations as to defamation. I mean, it's really clear in the lawsuit. There's numerous statements after the charges were dropped against Mr. Smollett. So I would just reference you back to the lawsuit. It's very patently clear about that. No, I'll, I'll add to that. Their participation was with the police and with the grand jury. That's who they fully participated with. They were asked to do something by a friend who they trusted, and at the end of the day, that friend betrayed their trust. Any other questions? Talks about $75,000 for each that's, that's a jurisdictional amount to get into federal court. Um, as we've indicated in the prayer for relief, we will be asking the court uh, and or a jury to award them the appropriate compensatory damages, punitive damages against the individuals, and cost of the lawsuit. The $75,000 is just a jurisdictional amount that has to be pled to get in for, for federal court. One more question, please. You talked about the idea that they've obviously had a tough time getting jobs, but uh, Mr. Smollett made a clear case after everything happened that he was innocent and that this wasn't his fault and that he basically was just a, a victim in this. Can you guys address what he said after he was set free? Mr. Smollett's statements are not evidence. We have evidence, actual evidence, besides self-serving statements to promote yourself. There's a big difference between self-serving statements and actual evidence. Thank you, everyone. This morning. Yes. This morning. And do we know if both of these defendants have been served? Uh, no, service will go out this morning to them. So we expect they'll be served today. Yes. Um, they'll be notified of the lawsuit today, and they can decide whether they can they want to come in and file an appearance directly or wait the appropriate time. They have time to, to respond. How unusual is this, though, that uh, attorneys are suing attorneys? Well, how unusual were the statements made by Ms. Glandy and and Mr. Garagos, after the case was dropped, pretty unusual. They're both pretty unusual. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.